presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the Internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great week, folks. Ignore the opinions of others. Don't take anything personally. Whatever people do. Feel, think, or say. Don't take it personally. Others are going to have their own opinions according to their belief systems. So whatever they think about you is not about you, but it's about them. Now, that's this really strange God, man. I Kind of tough to understand. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 40, NASDAQ up 107, S&P's up 13 and a half. Gold, gold contract trading down $6.60 at, at 1987 an ounce. We have silver down 32 cents, 23 dollars, 18 cents an ounce. Lights free crude trading down two dollars 29 cents at 85 dollars 78 cents a barrel. Notes and bonds: a 10-year note up 13 ticks, trading 106.13. The 30-year is up a point and a half at 109.27. And king dollar, king dollar is down 588 ticks, trading 105.575. Euro is out here at a price point of 106. Yen is at 149, British pound is at 122 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. The S&Ps looked over the cliff. Bottom line, Friday, you came down with volume. You were coming down right into the, in, the bottom of the consolidation. And, you know, bottom line, you could have jumped this creek in a second, man. And you didn't. The bottom line is that, yeah, the futures were down this morning. When you jump the creek, folks, though, the bottom line is that you would literally, you know, you'd be down 30, 40 points, so you got a gap in the deal, and that's not what we got. What we got is that you had, you had the S&P's trade down to 4.1780. Your swing point there is 4.2018. It rejected it. You're going to have lighter volume in the swing point. The swing point is 103 million shares. Right now, we're only at 62. So you can see what happened. You're down there. They start buying the market again. Bottom line, now we'll see what kind of bounce we're going to get. We look at the NDX 100, same type of setup in the NDX. Now, you got to remember that the NDX, the last time that the NDX came into that swing point, it was also a one-day wonder. This time here, well, it was a one-day wonder, but it stayed under the swing point for a day. This time here, it did not stay under the swing point. It, we got down to the 351.12, rejected it ASAP, you're at 357. Now, it's going to be intriguing for the Qs. It looks like that the big tech is going to save the Qs, and the big tech will save the market because what we have out here this week, you got Amazon, you got Google, you got Microsoft. They're all coming out with numbers. But what's really going to save the market, or has saved the market, and we'll get into this, is going to be the bond market and the dollar. Let's get out a little bit further. We get on to the gold market next, okay? So the gold market, I, my take is the gold market not only has already taken off, it's going to take off like a rocket ship. And the reason I'm saying that is this. So picture, we just, the, the rates just kept going up, but yet gold was going up too. And, you know, depending on how long we've been in the gold market, you know, the mantra always was, oh, you get higher rates, gold's got to go down. Well, guess what? It didn't go down. Now what you've done, had is that you're probably setting up a very large ABC structure you know, right now we're at the 1987. It looks to me like 2129 is your next level. And, you know, we got here pretty quick. I mean, when you, this is what's so intriguing. So listen to this. When you look at 
how fast we came off the bottom. Wait, wait to see this. Five, 10, 15 days basically took back four and a half months. <laughs> yeah. That's normally just the other way around, folks. Like when you normally go down, that's what happens. But in this case, it was going up how it happened. Notes and bonds. This is the number right here, man. You heard of when I was doing that update, the news everywhere. In fact, Bloomberg's backing this up again saying, oh, 5% is going to be back. 5% is going to be back. 5% is going to be back my eye. The bottom line is that we woke up this morning. That 10 years hitting 5%, okay? Here, let me show you something. The 10 years hit 5% overnight when no one was trading. The, the high was 4.990, okay? Right now, we're at 4.844. And if you take a look at it, it's the 10-year, right? Everything's predicated on the 10-year, by the way, okay? That, that's, your credit cards are, the mortgages are. Well, let's put it this way. Everything that, you know, us as individuals, you know, deal with. Not, you know, market participants, yeah, they can deal with the two-year, they can deal with the 30-year, but market participants in general. And so look at the contraction of volume that we had. It was a monster contraction of volume on Friday. Today, bottom line, you, we get the, we, well, you didn't even hit the lows today. That's what's amazing. I love the idea that we had the news and it didn't even hit the lows, okay? And then we go to King Dollar. It's all lined up, man. King Dollar has... You know, it was messing around last week, but that messing around, now it proves that that was building cause for lower price because now you get wide price spread again. This is the third time we have wide price spread coming off the highs. Now, what this sets up is going back to this 104.699. And that, the reason I'm, that's the number that it took quite a while to get through. So we'll see how it deals with that number. Because that number is also, watch this, that number is also right around where the 0 0.382 retracement is. So the bear side of this is that it, it broke, it's uptrend, it's coming back. We'll see how it handles that 104.699. The bull side of the dollar is that it should have pulled back anyway, okay? Now, a 0 0.382 retracement is nothing. OK, so it's going to be crucial to see where this dollar lines up. My take is that it's going to go all the way to the bottom. And the reason I'm saying that we're at the perfect time frame right now, meaning you're at the we're at the 23rd of October. You have the big tech numbers coming out this week. We have window dressing next week. This market wants higher price and it's still just shaky enough, you know, and because we've gone down so far, you know, this has been a one way trip for quite some time. Uh, people won't close their positions as fast as they actually should until you do see a couple really good signs of strength in the S&Ps, and then you see some conviction, more conviction in the dollar as we go to lower price. Dow Industrials right now down 69, the Nasdaq's up 92, S&Ps are up 9. Stay right there, folks. Come back with our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So Dow, Dow Industrials right now trading down 81. You get the Nasdaq up 94. S&Ps are up eight and a half. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, as we do each and every Monday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Steve has an outstanding program here at TFNN, 11 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, and also a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, it's very easy to get Steve's newsletter, folks. Come over to our website at TFNN. You go to newsletters, you're going to see it. Hit the newsletter button. It's going to be right on the right-hand side, Mastering Probability. You can get his newsletter for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199 or 22%. And you get it for a full year for $1195, which is a savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, okay? So the bottom line is that you can come over and say, okay, I want six months, see if it works. On the 28th day, if it doesn't work for some reason, just tell us you want your money back, no problem. Steve has a huge amount of archives out there, the different tools that he uses. You know, it's a nice value deal, folks. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, baseball still next October 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie yeah. Jackson. Here we go. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mr. Exactly. October. That's a long time ago, folks, but he uh, was uh, Mr. October. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was. But it, it's still I mean, there's going to be a couple of great games on tonight. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not a I'm not a baseball fan big time during the year. I'll go maybe catch a game or two. But during the, you know, the, the playoffs, World Series, it and makes everything, a difference. That's right. It, it, it does. But it's a small marketplace this year. Beginning two teams in Texas. OK, so they got that local market. Right. Yeah. So it doesn't really expand out. You know, you got that. You got Philly. And so it should be a good game uh, tonight. Uh, the uh, the the Texas games have been great. Um, you know, some. So I'm looking forward to that, but it's still hard to believe. It's October 23rd. We're still playing baseball out there. I know, especially because yeah. we like hockey so much. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. 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 So what I, what I thought today we would do, okay. and, and we're going to touch on some of the stuff that, that you've already talked about, but I just wanted to give you and the folks that are listening and watching, you know, what I'm keeping my eye on. So the first thing is, as you say, it's all about the dollar, king dollar. So... Let's start here. I know you've already talked about it, but I'll give you a different, a slightly different take on it, or at least levels for us to watch. And that is that if we, this is my U.S. dollar index dollar chart, we can see that since the bottom, bottom back here in July, and what I have on here, folks, the tools that you're looking at on this chart are just TAS market profiles. And what the market profiles do, the bottom of a profile tells us where buyers reside. The top is where the sellers are at. And the center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside that range. 
Now, in this case here, what's really cool is that each of the pullbacks, and you were talking about some of the pullbacks out there, each of the pullbacks here have found support at the bottom of their daily profile. Um, this first one was back in the August time frame. So this is the green arrows that we're taking a look at. Talk about waking up and looking out over the cliff, maybe jumping over the uh, creek out here. So we have that same situation that has occurred here in the US dollar index, but each time that price is tested where the buyers are at, at the bottom of the profile, prices held. Now, I do have a road momentum indicator top that's in place out here. So in order for the U.S. dollar index to really tell us that it's breaking out, we need to see a close above 107.05. But right now, today, a close below 105.57 is going to signal to you and I a change in trend. So a little bit different methodology than what you use out here, but just another confirmation. Uh, you and I, we don't talk about this stuff beforehand, and we don't talk about, uh, so, but we're both coming up with really the same conclusion. So the figure to watch today, folks, is 105.57. Now, I've got a, a really faint yellow line going across where we have other prior swing points. So really, that's kind of like the last bastion of hope. We get below those, then it's just confirming this change in trend signal that we're taking a look at. Now, as we've discussed, as you've discussed before with everybody, a change in the dollar, meaning that's going to head lower, should put strength. Here, we take a look at silver. So this is a three-day Cor uh, uh, correlation chart. So this gives us the directional correlation. So at the top, I've got silver. The center is the U.S. dollar index. And what's below it is the correlation. Now I'm using here the, the tightest correlation I can, which is a three-day average. When the bars are at the bottom of the uh, uh, of the zero line, below zero, folks, what that's telling us is there's an inverse relationship. So as Tom would say, the dollar's going higher, metals would be going lower. The dollar's going lower, metals are going higher out there. So you can see that it's a pretty darn good, uh, pretty good inverse relationship between these two. If we take a look at gold, it really says about the same thing. In fact, I'd say gold's correlation... They're both about the same. I'd say gold's is a little bit more, more favorable, a little bit uh, more consistent with regard to that inverse relationship. So now we've got that data to look at. Last Friday, the interesting thing here is last Friday, gold formed a TD9 count top. You mentioned some of the tools that come with folks that subscribe to my newsletter service or the, or the current subscribers out there. And this is really, this is a great tool for everybody to understand and learn. So we had a confirmed TD9 count top in gold last Friday. By the way, the bottom that formed in gold back here, that was a TD9 count pattern as well. So what this tells us is that in order for gold to tell us that it's going to move up to the higher level and the higher level that I've got is 2084 we need to see a close above 2920 a close above that will negate that signal and then where I'm coming up with that 2084 level Tom is that would be the weekly TD9 count breakdown resistance level so how I determine where a breakout occurs or the breakdown occurs is using this TD9 count system yes now the cool thing about gold for its weekly time frame and you'll love this you know this it formed a Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis, which is not easy to do. I, I haven't spent the time to go back and take a look at the weekly charts on uh, gold or silver, but there's not a ton of weekly Gartley buy patterns. And that's what we've got here. It's above resistance as we speak. Resistance for gold uh, using the TAS marker profiles would be up at 1964. Now, if we take a look at uh, silver, last week on Friday, just by a smidgen, Gold, silver negated its TD9 count top. All it needed to do was close about 2349, which it did on Friday. However, in order for silver to really tell you and I that it's breaking out, I need to see a close above 2392. If we get a close above that, then 2522 is into play. These green lines here, these are where I have it that uh, the instrument broke down. And we'll take a look at the daily time frame. The GDX, so put it all together, the GDX completed a TD9 count top last Thursday. And what price should do is it should pull back to target its oscillator and change line right around 2250. I'm sorry, right around 2854 out here. However, a close above 3007 is going to negate that top and it's going to tell us we're going to move up to its next breakdown area, which would be 3175. So what I'm providing for folks out here are the numbers to be watching either to the upside or to the downside. The ES Mini's inverse relationship to the dollar, not as strong if we take a look at that bottom panel. It's there, but we can see that it's starting to wane a bit out here as of the last, um, it's really since about February. So it's not as strong as that relationship between gold and silver. This is the NQ's relationship up at the top here the NQ. Again, the bottom is the uh, is the correlation. So a review of the daily equity futures contract, I've got bottoms for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, the YM out there. For the example, on the ES, we've got to buy the D-point pattern. The only way that gets negated is a close below 42.35.50. The NQ, it's got a TD9 count bottom. 
The only way that gets negated is close below 14,586. The Russell to the uh, Dow also has a buy the D point pattern. That needs to close below 33. 021. And even though you can't really see it out here necessarily, there's wave sevens, part of the Basil Chapman uh, uh, Chapman wave count out there. And all this needs is a higher low in order to confirm a bottom. So what have we learned? The U.S. dollar index, if it closed below 105.57 today, it's going to suggest we got a change in trend. Both gold and silver have got that strong relationship. Um, a uh, close above 20, 2009, 20 in gold is going to negate that sell signal and suggest that we head up to the 2084 level. I like it, man. Nice breakdown, Steve Rhodes. No Thank doubt you, about Tom. it, man. Thank you. You have a great week, a safe week, and of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow morning. You bet. And here's my 30 year treasury. And on Thursday last week, yep. it formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator, but on Friday it did. And that's headed up, that's headed up to 113. It's a beautiful man. thing. You bet. Take care, Tom. <laughs> Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Dan at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Well, welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow Industrials right now trading down 168. to get the Nasdaq up 58. S&Ps are down uh, three. Let's go into the Dow Industrials and take a look at the strength versus the weakness inside the Dow. Point-wise. Okay, this is what we have out here. You have point-wise, Microsoft's putting 20 positive points. Uh, American Express, 16. Walmart, 15 taken away from it united health minus 43 you get uh chevron minus 40 
Amgen, yeah, Amgen minus uh, 36. So let's go to, I want to go to Chevron for a second because this is when it, it's pretty wild to see that the oil prices have been high enough for a longer period of time that these oil companies, Exxon just did the monster deal. Now you have Chevron doing a monster deal. Chevron's buying Hess, it's all stock deal, I think it's 50 billion. Uh, yeah, 53 billion. Chevron to buy Hess for, um, and that's, let's see what they have to say. Chevron's going to be, Chevron agreed to buy Hess for 53 billion, a deal aimed at boosting production growth as the U.S. oil industry bets on an enduring future of fossil fuels. It's an all stock transaction. Chevron's going to pay a buck 71 a share for Hess. And let's go see what they haven't. The thing that's interesting is that, you know, Exxon didn't pay up. And maybe Hess wasn't in public. No, this is Hess. Okay. What did I just. So Hess. Yeah, Hess is trading 162. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the bottom line is that uh, an all stock deal, you can see there was no premium paid, man. This is what's so intriguing in both of those deals. Well, there was a small premium pay in the Exxon deal uh, when they bought the Shell producer, Pioneer. But on this one here, there's literally no premium. In fact, it's you know, less than it was um, the same it was on Friday. Because the lower that Chevron goes, the lower that Hess is going to go. Yeah, it didn't, you know, this is like it, it hit its high. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, inside the NDX 100, the strength versus the weakness inside the NDX. You got uh, Walgreens Boots, that's up 3.5%. Uh, NVIDIA's catching a bit, that's up 3.5%. Uh, you got Airbnb up 3.5%. I want to come back to that one for a second. Bookings.com's up 2.6%. Take it away from it. Intel's down 3.5%. You got uh, Riley Automotive, we'll come back to that one, down, down, down 3. I want to see what's going on there. Okay, so first let's go to Airbnb, and then I want to do... Yeah, I want to do Airbnb, and I want to do O'Reilly, because that's going to get interesting. Okay, so let's go take a look at Airbnb and see what they're doing here. So, okay, so the low's 81, the high's 154. They're going to be coming out with numbers on the 1st of November. Okay, so this is, this is just like the market. Yeah, there's not enough volume here. This is just like the market. It's come, come back to its strength from last May. Got a little bounce going. Nothing heavy, though. There's no conviction there. Yeah, there's no conviction there. Okay, so O'Reilly. O-R-L-Y. So O'Reilly Automotive, they come out with the numbers the 25th. They're coming out this week. The low for the last year, 52 weeks, is 749. The highs... 975. They are going to be looking to bring in 4.1 billion to the top line, $10.39 to the bottom line. I got some problems here. Look at this. Maybe this is, you know, if you're listening to Tommy's program this morning, oh, they're still at highs. This has been a consolidation at highs. Yeah, it's going to be hard to break this down. Anyway, what I was going to say, if you listen to Tommy's program this morning, now this is a this is a real heads up too, man. Um, that the the repo man, okay? There's there's more repossessions of cars that's been going on for the, like the last 15, 20 years, folks. Okay, and what's intriguing about it? It seems to me that you know, like in 2007, 2008, okay, everyone got over their head because they could get over their head in, in the housing business, right? And what has happened, you know, in the last, you know, whether it's five, six, well, it, in this particular case, is probably, you know, yeah, it's probably four or five years. Everyone got over their head in the car business. Why? Because they let them. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's that cut and dried. That if you remember, you know, cars used to have a, a loan ratio of like three or four years. Well, about seven years ago, they start extending that to five or six years. I don't know if they're up to seven years yet, but it's insane amounts of numbers, right? 
and they basically let you drive off that lot for almost nothing. You know, so you can see, I can see that whole thing cascaded. The difference is that, unfortunately, if the other person's getting repossessed, you know, that, that's pretty tough going to work and the rest of that. That's not going to hit the economy, though. You know, all that's hitting, that's going to hit the sub bonds that are backing that amount of cars. And then I can picture what actually also happened that there's so many folks through the pandemic that overpaid in a monster way because of the supply demand deal. So, you know, it's, but it's also an indication that the amount of money that is in the economy has been shrinking, is shrinking, and I suspect will continue to shrink because, you know, even if I'm right on the context of the bond market that, you know, these rates are going to start going lower, you are still at a very high rate, net rate of interest for anything that you are going to buy as a hard asset, you know. So, you know, I think the, the, the car market is going to say quite a bit. I think, you know, if you're looking for a car, just wait another four or five months and there's going to be so many used cars on the market. It's insane. Now, that's what gets interesting about that O'Reilly. Okay, that's still hanging at highs up there. Um, but most times, you know, the O'Reillys of the world, they make money when the economy's bad. They make money when the economy's good. You know, so we'll, we'll see where that shakes out. What we are going to have this week inside the NDX 100, which is you got Microsoft that's going to be coming out with earnings on the 24th. We have Amazon, I believe, the 24th also, 26th. Google is the 24th. Apple, probably next week. Apple's November 2nd. And what's going on with Apple, now this is going to get really interesting because the, this morning, what you had out here in China is that, you know, China's looking into Foxconn now, okay? So there's a lot of moving pieces, man, right now in the big tech area. Dow, Dow Industrials down 191, Nasdaq's up 45, S&P's off seven and a half. Stay right there, folks, we'll come right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today.
An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. Sit down. Down this is trading down 150, 170, rather. Uh, Nasdaq is up 54. S&Ps are off three and a half. So let's go look at the, uh, the 30 year also, folks. Okay, we take a look at the 30 year. Well, I got a nice movement. Okay, so the 30-year, you get 581,000 contracts. But I want to do this. I'm going to bring this back. I want to see both where this actually hit on the generic chart. Because what you're going to have here, folks, is this. Is that, let me bring this back first. Is that the note and bond market, you know, is number one huge, much bigger than the equity market. What's also happening is that because the moves have been so large, meaning on the way down, yeah, there's plenty of support at these levels down here. I mean, there should be, we're at 2003 and 2004 levels for the 30 year, okay? And we're at 2023, right? So my point is, is this. If the if the ten year gets follow through, you are going to see a huge amount of buy in here because of the fact that I had brought this up on Friday. If you remember that when you know on Fridays, Best Fit and I used to do the half the show was the real estate show, and you know we were talking about interest rate structure, and you know a couple times we had. Uh, Bud Springs on, Springs, Springs on about uh, mortgage rates, right? And when, in fact, the 2020-21, when we did hit zero on the 10-year, the 10-year mortgage, the mortgage rate, you know, never went below like the 2.5, 2.65, okay? So what had happened then was that there was so much demand, okay, that the brokers themselves, okay, weren't going to go under that number, even though the Fed was, you know, at, actually they were at minus 5-0, okay, minus half a percent. So just the opposite effect could be taking place right now, meaning that you'll have the market first come in and start buying the 10s, the 2s, the 5s, the 30s. And if that happens and there's follow-through, you will see not a tsunami, but you are going to see a huge amount of buying because the question is going to be then, am I missing, you know, getting 4.75, 5% on my money, okay? Um, you know, so we'll see where this shakes out. But my take is that that's exactly where we're at right now because it seems like all the pieces actually fell into place. The, the biggest piece really had to do with, technically, the 10 kept going down. It spiked its lows. When it spiked its lows, it did it with tremendously light of volume. We still went lower on Friday. Right, we didn't go lower on Friday, but bottom line, it couldn't hold price. And then 
the icing on the cake was waking up this morning. There's no doubt. That's, that's where it was. And then just as I'm, I'm speaking about this, so listen to this. It, it, and they're still, collect, you know, the, the news media will still stay on to this for a bit. So here's the new one up, right? That I, that I told you. So that was the headlines in the journal this morning as well as the Bloomberg. Now, the Bloomberg just put a new one up. New age for treasuries means 6% yield isn't out of the picture. Now, you see, picture, you get a picture how this gets done first. First, you have an editor that has to basically, you know, give a couple writers, you know, say, okay, you have an assignment. So I suspect what ended up happening is that when overnight that we did hit the 5% in the 10-year, right, they woke up. They said, oh, my God, okay, you know, yeah, here's your, here's your writing assignment. And, you know, this just came across, what is it, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, right? So you get two writers saying that, hey, you know, this thing could go to 6% now. That's the type of action that you actually need in order to get bottoms going. And you can imagine, you know, like you folks listening, well, we're in the marketplace. So this is where the market, that when you're in the marketplace, I've found that it's so cool because if you really understand notes and bonds, it doesn't mean you're going to be right all the time, but you're going to be pretty close to, you know, being right there. You're not, the, the note and bond market is different than the equity market, folks, okay? Um, it, it, I can't really put my finger and describe what I'm talking about, but I can tell you from the time I was 30 years old, I always kind of had this note and bond market down. Um, you can be off, but you're not going to be off that far. And a lot of the times what ends up happening is that you need the end of the world scenario, that rates are never going to stop going up, that the squeeze is going to be on forever, and that's not how it works. The squeeze has been on for a long period of time. The squeeze has been on for a good year and a half right now, and it doesn't mean the Fed's going to pull back. I'm not saying that the Fed's going to pull back. What I'm saying specifically is that the market participants themselves are going to start buying the notes and bonds, meaning the more they buy them, they pull the rates back. That's kind of, that's kind of where this shakes out. And this, the, the sweet spot, this is how this goes. The sweet spot inside the mortgage market is 2.7.5, uh, I mean, 5.5 and a half. That's the number. So what would happen there is that you, you still need a lot of movement, man. I, and I don't expect five and a half rates, you know, overnight. I do expect we're going to be at five and a half, you know, probably six or seven months from now, though, which is going to be a big number. And as the dollar goes, we got a question of the dollar. As the dollar goes lower, you will see that the dollar has been driving rates, okay? So if the dollar continues to go lower, you're going to see rates go lower because that's, it's all predicated on what the rate is for the country, for its currency. That's, that's how they get priced. That's the real bottom line. So it seems really bizarre that even where we are politically, meaning you don't have a House of Representatives, we have a, we have a House of Representatives that, you know, I mean, I don't know if this is Saturday Night Live or, you know, uh, what it is, okay? But, you know, and, and you know it's amazing, too. Anyway, they, they can't get a freaking thing done. That's the bottom line. So, And I don't, think, I don't expect that to change, by the way, either. What, what blows my mind about all this whole context, like people think it's actually going to change. It's not going to change because you got, you got eight Republicans that just don't want to do anything on a continual basis and haven't done anything on a continual basis. But that's all they need to stop everything. And they don't care about stopping everything. So, you know, that's not going to change. I, I, don't, I suspect they'll do something to get the government not to shut down. But my point is, on the market, is that it's not going to make any difference. This market wants to go up. <laughs> because the fact of the matter is that bonds are going to basically, you know, continue higher on price, lower in yield. And if the dollar goes down, it's going to give the market breathing room. Which, really, put that in front of a Harvard class or an MIT class a few years from now, right? You have, you have wars in the Middle East. You have House of Representatives that is non-functional and markets that go up. That's about as deviant as you get. 
Stay right there, folks. Come right back. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter Market Insights firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. The Dow down just is down 187. Nasdaq's up 36. S and P's are up uh, six and a half. Let's go take a look at uh, GBTC. So check this out. This is going to be pretty wild. How this is going to check out, folks. So you get this is the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, right? You can see this right here. See this premium now? It's the premium is only minus 7.9 percent. When you go back six or seven months ago, folks, this premium was almost minus 34 percent. Okay. So what's going on is that Grayscale number one had won a court fight in August. Today, what ended up happening is that they actually have the order, okay? And with the order from the Federal Appeals Court, uh, bottom line is telling, you know, the SEC that the move sends the matter back to the SEC. The mandate puts the, into effect the court's ruling in August when it overturned the SEC rejection of Grayscale's proposal to convert its trust into an ETF. The judge called the SEC's decision arbitrary and capricious because the regulator failed to explain why it approved similar products. The SEC had argued that the ETF based on Bitcoin lacked adequate oversight. Approval of the ETF is seen as a potential watershed. They're going to get this thing done, folks, okay? Now, two different things are going to happen here. This, is, this, is, this gets really intriguing, right? Just as a story, it gets intriguing. Because, so, 
they'll get this done. Now, what also happens is that the guy that runs this, right? Well, him and the Winklevoss twins are in a huge fight because of the fact that when Bitcoin, well, actually, let's go to yeah, XBT. Let's go to Bitcoin first because you can see Bitcoin was actually getting traction even before this came out. Now, you can see Bitcoin. Look at this thing, man. Bitcoin's up 1500 bucks, right? You know, that was quick, man. Anyway, to make a long story short, what's going to happen, I think his name's Dan Gilbert, and this is going to bail him out. He's going to still be in trouble, but he's going to be collected hundreds of millions of dollars to fight the fraud charges he has right now. Well, see where it goes. Have a great week. A great night, a safe night. Come back and visit Tommy tomorrow morning. Man, it was a fast hour. Thanks, folks.